Okay guys, tonight I'm going to do something a little different than I did the other night. Tonight we are going to set up the Yaesu 891 to use the Signalink and the Raspberry Pi to the WSJTX FT8 and Whisper software. I finally got it working last night and hopefully this will help you. Okay, so you're going to need, because it does not have a inbuilt, uh, built in sound card, I learned today, you're going to need something like a Signalink device. And what this is, is it comes with a USB link to radio here. So that goes into the back of the radio. So now we're signaling to the back of the radio, okay? And then we have a USB here going to both of those go to the Raspberry Pi. So this to signaling, signaling to the Raspberry Pi USB. USB also to the Raspberry Pi. So once you've got your links set up, I have right now, uh, you can play with these, the trans transmit, receive, and the delay. Um, I have the delay just straight up and down, but you can play with the transmit and receive. The reason I'm using the Raspberry Pi is because it's experimental. It does a lot more than what we're just showing you here. Someone asked me last time, why are you using the Raspberry Pi? It's because if you already have a computer or a laptop and it's doing what you want, that's fine. Just use that. But just so you know, the Raspberry Pi has all these pinouts. And the pinouts allow you to connect to things like LEDs. This is an Arduino right here that I've been playing with. Arduino and a breadboard. It's very similar to the Raspberry Pi, only much less powerful. And it has pinouts also. And these pins can connect to things like these pins can connect to things like motors, servos, GPS units. This is where hardware meets, this is where software meets hardware. So, for example, I have a GPS unit here I bought, and what you can do is you can connect it to either the Arduino or you can connect it to these pins. You install some software on here, Python, and you can start getting GPS data. Which, in, which in fact, comes with a very accurate clock. If you needed just a clock alone, you could get it from a GPS unit like this. You connect it to, there's just four pins on here, you connect it to here, you put the software on, and you can read, read the pins, you can read the data, and it comes with these libraries that help you read the data, and all you do is say, you call functions like, how far am I from this latitude and longitude? Um, how fast am I going? Um, these functions help you. You don't have to code everything. It's been coded for you. So you just call these functions and it gives you data if you have a GPS unit. But this is just one example of things you can do. And over here is an example of where I hooked up an LED light and I can control that LED or many of them or entire strings of LEDs. In this case, I have an entire string of LEDs with different red, red, blue, and green, I believe. Red, blue, yellow, something like that. Um, this really pretty. Um, you can connect that to this and make you can make your own Christmas light show or something like that But it's it's pretty much infinite what you can do with one of these things They're also very cheap and very versatile and the Raspberry Pi is a full functioning Linux computer as we can see here I have WS JTX running it has web browser it has email It's just it's a Linux computer from everything from Excel to notepad calculator games Here's a few of the ham radio things that have that just came included when I installed WSJTX. FL Digi, FL ARQ. Haven't got those to work yet. Um, haven't spent much time on it either. But what we're focusing on here today is WSJTX. So getting this radio to work was a lot harder than the ICOM. And I'm going to try and help you here with the settings. Let's go ahead and just take a look at the settings on this right here and this is where I had the most trouble also check the description of this video I'm going to have all the settings and the menu item numbers in the Yezu over here the Yezu has a menu item number like 05 and then the menu item number is like 7 or something I'm going to have those in the description along with links to some of the stuff here in case you're interested Okay, so in here you go, in my case, you go to File, Settings, obviously in the General tab you put in your call sign and your grid square, very important. The radio itself, you have to find your radio in this list here, FT891, 
in this case, and I picked, you have to play around with this. This left side is your cat control, and here's the button to test the cat. You have to make sure the settings match, like 9600 here has to match on the radio, and I'll show you that here in a minute. But the USB zero is the what I determined was my actual rig, USB zero. 9600, 8 to none. All of this stuff works. Okay, on this side is the push to talk method. Here we have the USB one and the cat control selected, data and fake it. Now if you test the cat, it should work. I had tons of problems with it just hanging up, right? It would just hang there. Whenever I would try something, it would hang and I'd have to turn everything off and turn it back on again. I'd try something else, I'd write down what I did. You might have to do that and just spend some time doing that and you will get it eventually if you're having trouble. But these are my settings, hopefully, hopefully they'll help you. The weirdest one is probably finding which USB device is not like your keyboard and stuff. You're gonna have to identify that. Now, this was actually the easier part. The harder part was the audio settings. And in my case, I have sys default card equals codec and then default card equals codec. This was the hardest thing for me because look at all of these settings. I had, I had to start from the top. I didn't even know which one was, was wrong. So I just kept messing with these and messing with these and messing with these until finally it just flat worked. And you'll know it works because you will see your frequency here, 7074205 that you see on your radio. That means it's getting, that's part of it. It reads, it wants to read the frequency. That's not everything though. It still needs to be in control. But once that's reading, it should be working. So I have sys default card equals codec. Just be patient and keep trying different things. If you're having trouble, you're not quite sure which is which. I really look at all these options. How, how do you know which one's which? I strongly suggest you take a screenshot once you get it working. If you get something working, take a screenshot of each different setting, which I did, and I may even include that in this video. I probably will include that in this video at the end, the screenshots of what works for me. And take a look. I'm getting, I'm getting all these CQs. Let's go ahead and try to make a contact. You notice how it's not selecting anything right now? Something's wrong. Probably because I turned my radio off and on or something like that. So I'm gonna restart this. Start. I'm just going to prove to you that it's working right now and prove to myself that I didn't break it. Okay, so if we wait, first of all, make sure we're in mode FT8. This is the receive side and this is more, more like the trans, transmit side. And I'm on 40 meters, I'm already tuned up. And now the reason I want this radio to connect is because it's a lot more portable than the ICOM 7300. And I want to do this portable, so that's why I had to get this one working. There we go. See the dark red? That means I'm making a contact right now. I just wanted to prove to you that it's working as we pan over to the radio itself doing its job. I am receiving right now 704.2, it says. Now it's transmitting, you can see the red light. We'll come back over here. And we have successfully made a QSO using the FT891 in about two nights of sheer frustration. So now I'm gonna show you the most important settings for your radio, the 891. First of all, we're gonna go into you should be in digital mode. I've heard that you don't have to be in digital mode, but every time I Every time I put it in USB sideband, it pushes it back into data mode. See the D-U there? Data mode. Okay, so we're gonna go into the most important settings and we're gonna start out at... Okay, notice that there is a menu setting up here, five and a number of six. We're at cat rate, 9600 BPS. If you remember, that's what we had on the radio also. Now 567, we have the cat tote. A thousand milliseconds and then five seven sorry five eight we have disable cat RTS disable now I just showed you that this works so these settings work 
for me. They may not be perfect, but they work for me. Now let's jump down here to 712. 712, I have D-A-K-Y, D-A-K-Y, I call it Daiki. We have 81, data mode, others. 89, data in select rear. 810, data PTT select RTS. So data out level, you can choose to set that while you want. I have it at 10 and then 812 USB. Those are the most important settings. Again, all those will be listed in the description in the video down below. Okay, I wanted to show off the, uh, of course I'm still using the Raspberry Pi. I just got this in the mail. This is a tiny little five inch screen. And this is kind of the whole point is I wanted to maybe set up a field unit using a tiny screen, a tiny computer, to do digital out in the field. Maybe I'll make a box for this or something. But this is, I think, a $30 screen. Now, granted, I'm looking at WSJTX here. By the way, it's full, same computer. Uh, you need to install the drivers for the touch screen to work. So meanwhile, meanwhile, I have a mouse. Uh, but like I showed you before, this is a full-blown computer and I am doing WSJTX. You can see that red line right there. Made a contact with someone using this screen, the Signal Link, the Raspberry Pi, and the Yezu 891. Um, that's kind of the power of this. Is you, could, you can swap out screens. You don't even have to have a screen. You could have another computer, a laptop or something, remote into this box, this machine, and this machine here, you can have uh, you can have the screen up on another machine, and then it can run what's called headless, and that means no monitor. But meanwhile, this might be my setup. I'm not sure. I was kind of disappointed that this has to be part of my package. I was hoping just to have this and this, but it's like you have to have a sound card device. But hopefully, I'll put something together for you, and this is my new screen. There's Google. You have to do a lot of... Uh, you have to do a lot of uh, scrolling and some of these websites are going to look weird but you have to keep in mind that this is a very tiny monitor it's very easy to carry around let's try a contact really quick kind of bad I need a case of some sort for this so I'm going to maximize this I'm going to double click on this guy I'm going to hit enable transmit Let's see if we can get a contact. All right, I'm waiting. I think I'm calling again. Can barely see it because the camera's in the way, but K2, KD2RHT, I'm calling you on a Raspberry Pi and a tiny little screen. Okay, so just as I hit halt, I actually made the contact with VAK. I can't see it. It's so small and I'm not close to it because I'm behind the camera right now. But VA3KGB. I'm making a contact with him right now in Canada <laughs> on my tiny little computer. Now, give me some ideas out there on how I can box this up. All right, and there's a 7.3. There you go, guys. I made it work. Let's see the back of this thing. Not too pretty. Needs a case. There it is.